Welcome to Spoiler Peace Theater, the podcast that doesn't give a shit about spoilers. We just want to talk about the movies. My name is Evan Crean. My pronouns are he, him. I am co-chair of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and co-author of your 80s movie guide to better living. My name is Megan Kearns. My pronouns are she, her. I write film reviews for Edge Media Network. I too am a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and I'm a member of Gallica, the Society of LGBTQ Entertainment Critics. And my name is Dave Riedel. I write and I talk about movies. I'm a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association, and I forgot to mention my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association. We'll just say that twice. <laughs> it's yes, worth saying and twice. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, those are your pronouns. <laughs> yes, it's all true. So, <clears throat> Correct. Uh, on this week's show, we have some movies to talk about. We have three movies, in fact. Um, but before I get to those, I just want to mention that over on our Patreon this week, we have do exclusive audio each week for our patrons. We are talking about the 1998 film Practical Magic, which was a patron's choice. Yeah, yeah. It sure was. Yeah. <laughs> we have some magical things to say about it. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> Uh, we had a very lively conversation. Um, so if yeah. you're not a patron, please consider joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash spoiler piece. You can sign up and get exclusive audio. We put out a bonus episode for our patrons each week. You get to vote in polls. We're going to have one of those coming out soon. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So for this week's movies, we have three on the docket. We have The People We Hate at the Wedding, which is a comedy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Evan revealing his thoughts early. <laughs> We're going to be talking about the menu, which is like a kind of a mixed genre kind of movie, horror, thriller, some dark comedy thrown in there. And uh, we were going to wrap things up later with Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, which is the second film in the Knives Out series. So let's just get right into it. The people we hate at the wedding which is a uh, film. It's directed by Claire Scanlon. It is written by Lizzie Molnier Lagolin, Wendy Molnier, and based on a book by Grant Ginder. It's a film that stars Allison Janney, Ben Platt, uh, Cynthia Adai Robinson, Kristen Bell, and a bunch of other people who I like in things. <laughs> This is somebody wrote a not. This is a novel yes, that somebody I, wrote. And, yes. Oh fuck me. Yeah, it must be one of the worst novels ever because this movie <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> Sorry, just putting my thoughts right out yeah, there. Yeah, start. Oof, I man. Will, I will give you my alternate title for this movie, and then I want to hear what both of you think. Uh, I would like to call this "The People I Love Who I Hate in This Movie." <laughs> Yes, I concur, sir. Or, yeah, <laughs> yes. that's that's fairly accurate. Accurate, yeah, or, sorry, I would say. The people I love who are in this movie, I hate. It's, yes, it's more yes. appropriate. Because I don't necessarily hate all of them in this movie, but I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into this. Megan, you watched this, I think, the most recently of the three of us. So I did. I, I was assuming you have some fresh thoughts for us. <laughs> Fresh hot takes. Yeah, yeah, I usually prefer to let things sit a little bit, uh, but I don't think time is going to be any kinder or worse to this movie. Uh, yeah, I actually, I didn't hate this. I didn't care enough about this to hate this. I don't think this is worth my time to hate this, although I totally get why you or anyone else would hate this because there's a lot to hate. Mm -hmm. I love Kristen Bell. I love, now I cannot think of his name. It just zipped right on my head. The guy who's in Schitt's Creek, who is so delightful. Love oh, him. Oh, yes. Ted on Schitt's Creek. Yes. I forget the actor's I love name. him, love him, love him. Uh, you know, Allison Janney is almost uh, almost always a delight. And I do say almost always because sometimes, eh, but she's still always great, always giving a good performance. Yeah. And I love seeing... Um, Oh my God, what is wrong with me? I can't think of anyone's names. The the woman from The Good Place, not a girl. Oh, yeah. Darcy Carden, yeah. No, but no, the character. But yes, but the oh, character. Janet. Janet, yes, yeah. thank you. Yes, and yeah. I loved seeing her for a hot second. Like, that was great. And I think they're half-sister. I think she does a good job. And I know she's in the Lord of the Rings show, and she's probably great on that. But wow, these people are terrible and not in a likable, fun, interesting, compelling way. And this is a horribly written film, 
horribly written. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm realizing I forgot to give our one sentence plot summary. So if you don't mind me interjecting. No, that please do. Please do. Uh, this is about a wedding. It's family tensions ramp up among siblings in the week leading up to their half sister's wedding in the country. Alice and Jenny, when she was young, got you know pregnant had a, a daughter in england who lives in england and then she moved to the states and married andy daly and had two kids Kristen bell and ben platt <laughs> and uh yeah and so as the voiceover throughout the beginning of the film tells us they used to be all best buds the three kids and now they've grown apart and now they have to go to this like hoity-toity wedding um, because she's uber rich. Her dad, Enrique, has got tons of money. And so they're just all kind of pissed about having to go to this wedding. And then, you know, hijinks ensue. All right. Anyway, back to this <laughs> describing why this movie is bad. I think you hit the nail on the head, Megan, when you said that the writing is it's it, it all it all fails based on the writing of this movie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This Wait. is one of those movies that oh I'm sorry Megan go ahead no that's I think I was just gonna say it's kind of interesting because the Moulin Moulinier sisters they've worked on some good things like people love Bob's Burgers the North my roommate loves that mm-hmm. show and they've worked on a lot of other things so it's kind of weird to me that this kind of does not work at all on a writing level but yeah but anyway Dave this, please what were you gonna this say? doesn't work. For a moment, I mean, it's it's. <laughs> I say this about bad movies all the time. When you when you when there's something that's so bad, you're not really sure how it could be this bad. It's a miracle, like mm-hmm. how you could make every wrong decision at every turn, from the writing to the casting to the like. I don't believe any of these people are family members. First of all, <laughs> like not even, not even a little bit. Um. I don't, it's also weird, and this is not Ben Platt's fault, but it's weird seeing Ben Platt play the world's oldest high school student last year. Right. And then, right. And then playing a guy with a beard this year. Right. It's jarring. <laughs> I yeah. I went, it is jarring. When we watched this, I was like, well, at least he's in an age-appropriate role. But it is funny to me that they're treated, him and Kristen Bell are treated like close in age siblings when she has a good 11 years on in yeah. real life. Yeah. Yeah, but he looks um, so much older. <laughs> yeah. But this is also one of those stories, and Roger Ebert used to write this all the times. Like, if somebody just said, explained what had been going, like the conversation that Kristen Bell and the older half sister Eloise have at the end of the movie in the Taco Bell, if they had had that conversation a year earlier, yeah, we would, ne- this movie wouldn't even need to be a movie. All of the family problems mm-hmm. would have been taken care of before then. It's the sitcom right. problem. If everybody just didn't use subterfuge and deception and hide and actually just It's the just three's said, company problem. Yep, yeah, exactly. Everything is a misunderstanding it, that can be explained in one sentence. Exactly, exactly. Right. You had a miscarriage and I just found out I can't have children. And it, you know, I know that you felt terrible, but I was also feeling terrible for myself. And I'm sorry I missed, I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you when you're having such a difficult time. I will say, in this movie's defense, and I cannot believe I'm going to defend this movie. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Shots <laughs> well, fired. Pre-shots I fired. I know, I know. But sometimes those kinds of conversations are difficult to have. That's true. Because That's true. You, because let's just think about it for a moment. The Eloise might not have wanted to burden Alice, whatever her name is, Kristen Bell's character. Alice. Alice mm-hmm. with, you know, she was already feeling shitty about her own miscarriage. Maybe she didn't want to burden her with like, oh, well, fuck, I'm dealing with infertility. Like, you know, maybe she'll think I'm stealing her thunder. You know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, you know, unload on her, burden her. Right. So I'll wait. And then she waited too long and then she didn't show up. And then Alice is like, well, fuck you. But she's not going to say anything. So I can kind of understand how that would snowball. But... I think there are other issues in that in this movie where that 100% is the problem and could have very yeah. easily been resolved. I'm going to add mm-hmm. a, a caveat, not a caveat, an addendum to Ooh, your yes. um, thing. Yes, those conversations in real life are difficult to have. Very true. But I feel like in movies, they're used in as, excuse, as an excuse to keep characters apart. It's a That's trope. true. That's true. Yep, you are so right. Mm-hmm. And also, if this really happened 13 months ago, You've had 13 months to get through this, <laughs> you Ooh. know? Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's your like... sister's wedding. If you would think 
if you were close at one time, you would think you would be able to put on a brave face and maybe not just ruin everything. I do like that the sister is not a pushover. Yes, in that, like, I do too. They yes. start fucking around when they get there and she's like, no, <laughs> you will not do this to me. Yep. Like, you will fucking not ruin this for me and embarrass the shit out of me. Everybody get your act together. We're trying to be happy and have a good time here. <laughs> yeah. But also think about like what this movie thinks is funny. They go out, they have a terrible time their first night together because Kristen Bell and Ben Platt are acting like assholes and Eloise is like, what the fuck are you doing? And then they run into Eloise's coworker and that's supposed to be funny and weird. And then they run into mm-hmm. him like four more times and it's right. always supposed to be funny and weird. Why is it funny and weird? Just because he's in the wrong place at the wrong time? Right. I yeah, don't get just this. Just you work with the guy and you seeing all the worst qualities of you. Like, yeah. I- <laughs> like if you two had been fucking and then you invited him to your wedding anyway and you keep running into him and it's weird. I'll maybe kind of sort of forgive that. But like just to have some fucking weird English guy be that we're in England. Why would it be weird that this weird English guy is showing? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I also yeah. don't know why it's so hilarious. Why there's so many gay jokes that are supposed to be hilarious. Like, oh, it's so hilarious that we're going to open up our relationship. Right. Oh, it's so hilarious that I'm going to tell this person that my son is gay. Although I will say the hardest I did laugh. I laughed twice in this movie. And the hardest I laughed was when Ben Platt, and I don't like him at all, but the way he says this, I think is funny. He's like, oh, don't worry. Mom's just explaining anal sex to your coworker. <laughs> and I right. did think that was yeah. amusing, just the way he said it. But I'm also like, why are we making so many jokes? Like, it's just, I don't know. Right. And I know it's yeah, a comedy, like, but it just felt weird. Like what we're joking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. The The writing in this movie is piss poor from the dialogue all the way to the overarching plot points and the <laughs> direction yeah. of the story. It's like, you know, you know that it's bad when a cast that is this stacked is still failing, <laughs> like utterly floundering. Like we were talking before about Darcy Carden and Kristen Bell, who share a scene in this. And they were on The Good Place, an incredible show so where they have good. the best chemistry and they're so funny. And here they share one completely laughless, dull scene. And you're like, how could these two performers who have such great chemistry fail so miserably? Oh, wait, it's so poorly written. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I said, to, I didn't even know what scene Evan was talking about because I've never watched The Good Place. And I was like, are you talking about the underwear scene? And he's like, <laughs> yep. And I was like, okay, yeah, right. it's not funny. Like the no. premise isn't even funny. It's not funny that you would be taking your underwear off to leave on your boyfriend's desk at work. And then like the woman who waters the plants finds you and decides to help you put your underwear back on. It's not funny. There's nothing funny about that. Like I just, right. I'm trying to think of like two actors who are fucking great who could make that work. None come to mind. And I love <laughs> Kristen Bell. I don't you know. know. When you describe that scene, Dave, I'm kind of laughing because it sounds funny when you describe it. <laughs> right. It does sound funny. And it's weird that you can make what should be right? a funny scene so you, laugh free. Right. You know what's happens. funny about it is me getting angry about yes, it. That's yeah. what's exactly. Funny. That's the funny part. That is the funny part. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, this I mean, movie, it's not though. that funny. I'm giving myself too much credit. but it's, Yeah. <laughs> It's painful. Like the voice, all the voiceover in the beginning is so painful. It reminded me of the voiceover in Love in New York. Oh, yeah. That Dating in New York. Fuck, that Dating movie? in New York. Oh, God. Yeah. That movie. Oh, no. Yeah. Turtle from Entourage's voiceover. This is Turtle oh, from Entourage oh. level voiceover. <laughs> well, because it, yeah. it has the same joke in the, it, when the movie ends. It's like, and they were all happy until the end credits. And, and Dating in New York ended with, and they were really happy for three months. And it's like, what is the purpose of this fucking story if you're just going to pull the rug out from under me the moment it's over? Fuck right. off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. It's, it's beyond. And then it's just other people we haven't even mentioned. Like Tony Goldwyn shows up in a scene. Lizzie Kaplan is the like, yes! wife of his of her uh, Kristen Bell's <laughs> boss that she's hooking up with. And she shows up at the wedding to fuck shit up. Uh, you, like so many people are good and they are not good in this <laughs> yeah the only thing I thought was even remotely clever and you two will probably disagree with me was oh. when was when Lizzie Kaplan showed up and it turns out she had stolen her husband's cell phone because I've heard that story happen in real life to people so I was like huh I actually didn't see that coming but also like the the poor the, the sweatsuit they put her in if you're gonna put something put to somebody in something that's supposed to make them look like they just had a baby, 
actually make it look like you didn't just stuff a bunch of toilet paper into it, okay? Because it's like really weird. <laughs> yeah, it is and, box shaped. It's yeah. very strange. <laughs> it's like obviously you had a budget for this movie because you have Allison Janney and uh, Ben Platt and Lizzie Kaplan and you know Tony Golden for Yor- Yorma Takone. I mean, just like stacked, like Evan keeps saying. This is the one thing you didn't think to budget for is Lizzie Kaplan's sweatsuit? Okay. Uh, yep. <laughs> Stick a fork in me. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, and we've seen Kristen Bell play the mean but funny character on yes, The Good Place, and exactly. she nails that. And, and in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah, that's true. She knows how to play mean but funny, and just it just doesn't work here. <laughs> it seems like her heart's not in it. <laughs> yeah, well, it is interesting because she replaced Annie Murphy, and I feel I do, and I'm wondering, I'm like, would that have been an, any better of a movie? Because I love Annie Murphy, but I'm also yeah, like, she's great. She is great, and she's great with Ted too, whose yep. name Dustin. I never can remember his last name. I know it's Dustin something. Milligan. Thank you. Yeah, and they have great yep. chemistry, but I'm also like, no, I don't think it would be any better because Kristen Bell no. is a fine actor. So, and she's very comedic. Uh, you know, I don't think it's that. I think it's the the writing and the direction, unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Dustin Milligan was the only thing I liked about this Me movie. Me too. Just because oh, he's so effortlessly charming. Yes, I agree. And I liked I liked the Eloise too, the sister. Um, I liked oh, both yeah, of them. Oh yeah, she was good too. Yeah, I liked both mm-hmm. of them. They, they were really it for me. Um, and you know, and I hate, I hate shitting on a movie that's, you know, written by women, directed by a woman. You know, we love rom-coms here. And uh, yeah, what a, I was really excited to see this. What a disappointment. There was no rom and no com. So it was just a movie, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel bad shitting on movies with, you know, written and directed by women too. But I guess, I mean, I guess this just means that women can make bad movies too. I don't oh, know. of course they can. But you know, No, I know. I'm yeah. Being, I know. Yeah. You're being cute. Character Dave. Got yes. <laughs> but the problem is I think we're not at the threshold yet where, you oh, know. I, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know what you mean. Because it's still it, so it, hard but, for women to get. I, I think the thing that's lighted. that we're all kind of hung up on with this is is I'm getting this from you two is like the three of us we just cannot believe how bad this is yeah you know it just goes so wrong when you have all yeah. the right elements there right yeah. you have this cast and then and even the title sounds kind of funny I thought yeah. this movie I was I was so excited to see this movie the people we hit the wedding oh that sounds like kind of raucous and fun yep. yeah. Yeah, I think I was expecting like kind of bridesmaids, you know, like as far as like wedding gone awry type of feel. And yeah, no. Bridesmaids took the time to write characters, yes. though, and not just yeah. write situations for their characters to be in or to be a sitcom, in other words. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you nailed it, Dave. That is, I think, the big problem. That's yeah. the problem. I mean, yep. Every character in Bridesmaids, I believe either knew each other beforehand or is getting to know each other because they're part of the wedding party. Mm -hmm. This movie, Mm -hmm. no, I don't believe that these people ever spent any time together on Santa's lap. I don't think they ever met ever before in their entire lives. No. 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 All right. Well, we spent enough time crapping on this movie. Let's, (laughs) let's move on to (laughs) the menu, which is a movie I've actually been really looking forward to talking with both of you because this is spoiler piece after all. And I feel like we can really, you know, dig in to the uh the plot of the movie so this is directed by mark mylod it, it's written by will tracy and seth reese it stars uh, ray fines anya taylor joy nicholas holt and uh a few other folks who i've recognized john leguizamo reed bernie uh judith light <laughs> judith light i was so yep. that was kind of fun yeah. to see her <laughs> yeah it was was interesting to see her pop up in this um so the quick one sentence summary young couple travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises yes there are some shocking surprises i guess at this restaurant ray finds is the chef who is takes himself entirely too seriously and anya taylor joy her character margo is dragged there by nicholas holt and uh, she's just kind of going in with an attitude of like, oh, man, like eye rolling at all the frou of this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this turns out to be horror, dark comedy, thriller elements. Someone else want to describe more of the plot? 
I feel like I'm talking too much. Well, I want to make it clear that it's not a movie about cannibalism. <laughs> it is not a movie about because cannibalism. Because I said to one or both of you, I'm like, is this a movie about cannibalism? Because I've seen enough of that in the last <laughs> couple of years. And, and neither of you had seen it yet. And, and I, one of you was like, oh, I hope so. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> that was me. I said maybe. Was- <laughs> and I hope okay. so. That's it. Which right. would have been my second cannibal movie of the week because I already saw Bones and All, which is a cannibal movie. But anyway, <laughs> this is yeah, not a I cannibal I movie. Just, <laughs> I think I was just thinking of that movie with Seb- Sebastian Stan. But um, yes, fresh. Which is done by the same production company, funny enough. Uh, hmm. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just, I'll give you my quick, what I thought and, but I, I, to get into the meat uh, of it, um, <laughs> I liked this with caveats. So it's better than your mileage may vary, but I still have some, I, I think that some of the, um, the ideas the screenplay explores are not very deep, but it wants to think that they are, you know? So I don't know. <laughs> Do we want to flesh out? <laughs> yeah, the, I feel like we should. More? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. so Nicholas Holt is going there with Anya Taylor Joy. Sorry, because I feel like we needed to just delve <laughs> right. into it. And feel Go, free to yeah. jump in and add stuff where I'm leaving stuff out. Uh, so he takes Anya Taylor Joy there, and she's not his original guest. He was originally planning on bringing someone else, and he actually knows a lot more than he's letting on about this little, you know, exclusive at restaurant on this private island. Um, there's supposed to be, you know, really fancy food, and there's all these other rich a holes that are there. You know, John Languizamo is like an asshole movie star with you know putting on airs of importance and there's a bunch of like finance bros there and there's like reed burmy who's some you know asshole guy who's constantly cheating on his wife there's just a bunch of people there and you know as soon as they get there they start to notice that things something is going on here like everyone in the kitchen obviously worships the chef uh, he's able to like call everyone's attention with this like really sharp clap of his hands and people are always yelling and chanting in unison and the diners are just not appreciating the fact that they're getting this like super exclusive meal. And then they eventually find out that Ray finds his plans to kill all of them. And the, all of the, the, all of this is supposed to be a quote unquote part of the menu, which involves him killing the guy who has been financing this entire restaurant, this entire venture and killing the other diners, uh, and killing his staff. Don't forget that yes, part. His yes, his entire staff too. Yeah. Yes, he's and himself. To, yes, yes, and himself. He's, he wants to let it all go up in flames, <laughs> literally and figuratively. <laughs> yes, right. but because uh, Anya Taylor Joy is a replacement date, she is not part of the menu, and That's she correct. throws a wrench into the works. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of cryptic too. Um, <laughs> Basically, he gives her an opportunity to side with, die with the the other chefs, or to die with the diners because she is not a part of the original right. menu, as it were. <laughs> I do like and how then, she's like. So wait, in either scenario, I, I die. die. And he's like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I do love, mm-hmm. and I know we're jumping ahead, but I do love that she that. It's very clear. I love their match of wits that she yes. can go toe to toe with him. And because she's a service worker too, as we learn, she's a sex worker and she is actually an escort for Nicholas Holt. She's not his girlfriend or new date or anything, which is kind mm-hmm. of, it's funny. I had kind of a clue early on because yeah. he kept saying, he kept calling her a cool girl. And I was like, oh, this guy's really a loser. And he's like, just cares about women as like trophies and status objects. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so it was kind of a tip off, but a subtle tip off. Um, but yeah, but I think it's interesting how she, you know, she asks for her for her a different meal. She wants a cheeseburger. She wants to send her food back in to get a cheeseburger, challenging him. And then she's like, I want to take that to go. And she gets to live because she does that. And I think that's very interesting. That is yeah. interesting. But the way that, that she found out the way that she figured yes. out that would get her out really made me mad. Oh, she it made breaks, you mad. Well, she breaks into his house. You know, you're never supposed... There's a, this thing in the movie that the staff, the kitchen staff, I guess there's really only one front of house staff, um, which is unusual for a restaurant. But there's... Mm-hmm. Uh, there's Everybody lives on the island. And, you know, they wake up at four in the morning and they work until the restaurant closes and it's a very monastic kind of life. Fine. 
No one ever goes in Chef's house. Well, at some point, of course, you know that's going to come up again. And Anya Taylor-Joy breaks into Chef's house, and it turns out it's just this one barren concrete floor, wall, ceiling room because mm-hmm. he has built, he's given up everything. Like, And then you see the photos with like, he's got a wife and a kid at some point that are clearly no longer a part of his life. And the first time he ever makes a big hit as a as a as a head chef, he's not smiling in the photo. And then she gets to the photo where he's got the bur he's like, local boy loves making burgers or whatever it yeah. says. And he's got yeah. this Play big, s- yeah. this big smile chain. on his face. And I was like, well, when is this going to come back? And then of course she asked for the cheeseburger and I was just like, please don't go down this road. And that's what gets her out. And I was just like, I was just disappointed. <laughs> I just wanted. I loved that personally. I, I liked that I, too. I thought it was great. Yeah, I loved that she, and I love that he recognizes that yep. what she's doing. Like he's grinning when he he's knows. doing it. He's excited. No, he he, he understands. He yeah. understands. I'm not saying that the characters don't understand. I'm just saying that this, I, I feel like, and you guys are going to criticize me for, for reducing it to eat the rich, but the whole, the whole like, <laughs> you know, riches versus poors thing. I just. It, it just, I do appreciate that Rafe Fine's character, I, I can't remember the screenwriter's name, takes pains to say, look, I'm every bit as much of the problem as you all are. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I'm dying mm-hmm. here tonight too. But it just kind of, aside from the, the whole, like the setting and all of that sort of stuff, which I really liked a lot, by the time that the sous chef, you know, they roll out the shower curtain or whatever the fuck that was, and they're lining it all with like dead <laughs> yeah. roses. Yeah. And I'm like, well, when's this guy gonna, you know, die? Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was gonna blow his own head off, but I did know that the reason they had him standing on that was because there was it was going to get messy. Oh, you know, of so I was just, I just kind of, once you know, you kind of figure out what the beats are. Th- I think the only thing that surprised me was when I can't remember the Mater D's name. What is her name? Elsa. The, the only thing that surprised me was when she tried to kill Anya Taylor Joy. Otherwise, right. I was kind of like, "Holy shit!" You know, I mean, yeah, she's um, like, oh. "I will not be replaced." <laughs> right. Oh, and I did appreciate that when uh, the chef gives the men an opportunity to run off the island, that they did give the guy who was caught last a bonus, a moose bouche or whatever it was they said it was. Yeah, I don't remember a bonus <laughs> meal. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I kind of like that, but I just I think that you know her character. Uh, Anya Taylor Joy kind of has this. Uh, I I don't know. I just you know that she's smarter than everybody else in the room, or she's and maybe Rafe finds is the maybe they're as smart as each other, and you just kind of like I don't know why. Um, I was waiting for something to happen between the two of them, but then when it did, it was still cool to watch it unfold because she's you know kind of a, this great young talent who we've discovered in the past five years or whatever. Some Robert Eggers, whoever. Someone discovered her. And then you get to see Rafe Fiennes doing a kind of weird comedy kind of thing that he's not necessarily known for, and I appreciated that too. But I just, I don't know. I just, um, it felt a little kind of kind of silly in some ways. And uh, But I don't know. I think it's because you know that all of these rich assholes are just rich assholes. Fuck them. You know? So I think I wanted something like even crazier than blowing up the entire restaurant and killing everybody to happen, quite frankly. I don't know. I mean, I think that's Especially the crazy. finance bros. They suck. <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty crazy. And actually, not all of them are rich assholes, which I think is interesting because they are all lumped in together that way. Like Janet mm, McTeer. rich asshole? Well, I'm about to tell you. So oh, Janet, Janet McTeer, whom, by the way, is an actress we haven't even mentioned yet, and I love her. She's great. I adore her. She's yeah. always wonderful. She's not necessarily in the same echelon as the other rich assholes. I mean, yes, she's a food critic. But again, I think my issue with this is that, once again, critics are always vilified in film, mm. whether it's a food critic, music critic, film critic, it doesn't matter. Um, and then her editors there too. But also Amy Carrero, who is the voice of Shira, she's also great. Um, she's John Leguizamo's assistant. I don't know that she's necessarily a rich asshole, though she has been embezzling his funds. Right. Um, well, but remember, she went to Brown like- and didn't take student loans. Well, so. yes, that is true. That is true. Um, as Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people probably have done too, which, yeah, I guess does make but them I, a rich asshole. No, I'm actually like, yeah, no, you're right. It is actually, I'm actually coming around to your thing. Yeah. Well, here's the thing though. Actually, to your point though, even though she has been embezzling, she's, I wouldn't call her an innocent cause that's just not true, but like 
she's not a dick. She's not like right. those three finance bros no, who are well, like, are um, do you know who the fuck we are? Right. You know, or right. like John Leguizamo, who's just kind of a floundering former. St- right. He's like on his way down. Yeah. She doesn't really have any axes to grind or she's no. not trying to be, she's not full of herself. She's just like, I'm tired of being your assistant. Fuck you. I right. stole some exactly. of your money. Yeah. And so. Which is also, I don't think Judith Light is necessarily an asshole either. She doesn't seem to be an asshole. She's just lumped in with her husband. Right, exactly. So that's kind of my issue is that I don't think everybody here is an asshole. But (laughs) yeah, but it it is clearly a class issue. Um, I really liked this tremendously. I thought this was really Mm -hmm. interesting. And, you know, and and Dave, what you're saying about. I, I did too. Oh, good. It doesn't seem like, like it, so it I'm glad. No, yeah, I did. I did. I did. No, I I'm glad. I wasn't taking that away either. Yeah, thank you. So, no, I'm glad you said that explicitly. Yeah, I mean, the thing of it is, is that, and I know we talk about this a lot, like, and especially, Dave, you're very good at able at being able to pick out what's going to happen. And it's so obvious in so many films because a lot of films are using tropes that, are, that we are very familiar with, and we see so many films a year that we're seeing things over and over and over. I was not surprised by a single thing that happened in this movie. This movie right. is very intentionally laying the groundwork for yeah. what's to come. But I will tell you, that made it more tense for me because I knew what was coming. I was like, that guy's going to die. That person is going to get his finger chopped off. They're all yep. going to go up in flames and it's going to be s'mores. Right. Like even before he said s'mores, I'm like, oh, we're ending with s'mores. Like I knew right. it. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. made it so much more tense. And that I found that much more riveting and like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe we're going here. I can't believe this is going to happen. So I really liked this. What I will say, my one quibble with this is, is that reading the production notes, it's very clear that they, especially Mark Mylod, wanted to be very accurate and very precise with the food. Like all of the food you see is edible. It's all uh, designed by Dominic Crenn, who's a Michelin star chef. And it looks great. The restaurant looks great. It all looks very accurate. Um, It's interesting because Slovak... um, Ray Fine's character, the chef, is not actually based on any one particular chef. Although I did think it's funny that he calls Judith Light a donkey. And I'm like, oh, that's Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay used to call people donkeys <laughs> all the time. So it's clearly yeah. a little tell, even though it's not necessarily him. But what I will say is that, you know, as someone who loves food and loves the art of food and artistry of it, I feel like this is lampooning foodie culture. And I get it. And there is such an elitism there, but it also doesn't seem to be really respectful of it. And I think that's something that, you know, you can make arguments for. Thank you. I think you can make an argument for that. Maybe they are respectful, but I didn't feel that they were kind of bothered me. I think they were more trying to comment on the people who are like Nicholas Holt's character who think that they're foodie people and have this false sense of knowledge and think that, oh, I watch a bunch of cooking shows, therefore I'm an expert, therefore I can be a douche to people about this and look down my nose and talk to Anya Taylor-Joy like she has no fucking clue what she's talking about or she's just totally uncultured. Yeah. (laughs) I gotta say... I'm glad Nicholas Holt met his end kind of (laughs) early. Yep. Yeah. I immensely enjoyed this movie. I really, yes, I really, really enjoyed this. My my one sentence review was I'll have what she's having with the cheeseburger emoji (laughs) next to it. Um, But yeah, I found this movie really entertaining as a uh, social satire. It's um, tense. And like you said, Megan, even though there was stuff I knew was going to happen, the fact that I knew was going to happen made it that much more tense to me. And I love that this movie doesn't get too explicit with its imagery because Mm. I feel like we really could, like when they cut off Reed Bernie's finger, I feel like they really could have gone all over the top with that showing us them cutting the finger and the fact that we're looking at like a wide shot of him screaming and being held down. I feel like there's so many times where the movie went for something that was disturbing without, you know, hitting you over the head with it. And that's where I found it quite effective. (laughs) Yeah. I'd, I'd agree with that too. Like when he's drowning the um the 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 guy who's invested in yeah. this island, it's in a he's got super wide wings. shot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. slowly pushing him into the ocean until Ooh. you just see like the little yeah. It's just so I found this movie really effective in that way. These things that like you knew 
were coming. They weren't necessarily surprises, but done in a disturbing, yet tastefully disturbing kind of way. <laughs> well, you know, the menu is kind of tasteful too. So not the menu, the movie, but the menu. The menu the itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought this was really briskly paced. Yep. I, I love how they incorporated brisk, the yep. dishes. Uh, on screen where you get like what's in it with a like a quippy description of it like when they force Nicholas Holt's character to make the food and they call it like Tyler's bullshit or whatever <laughs> yeah. the dish and it's like poorly cooked lamb chops lack of cohesion is yep. like the description um so I I really appreciate that on on that level and I loved watching Anya Taylor Joy and Ray Fiennes you know going toe to toe and just matching wits and I love that she figures out how to get out of that and i i the moment where she's eating the cheeseburger wiping her mouth with the menu that she took in her to-go bag and then while the island is just exploding yeah <laughs> it's the perfect ending to this movie i mean i i don't want to give you two the wrong impression i did like this i thought all of the performances were terrific but yeah, i think are. the thing i think the thing that that i couldn't quite get past and like i said still enjoyed it would give this movie on the five star letterbox scale, we'll probably give it three and a half stars. Ooh, nice. Elsa is so off puttingly malevolent from the <laughs> moment we meet her that I was just like, why would these people even, these people are rich assholes who are used to getting exactly what they want when they want it. And they wouldn't, like, I just, I, gr- I grew up with these people. I, I just know, and when I say just a lot of corporate, whatever, you know what I mean. I just, these people wouldn't tolerate that. <laughs> like in real life, they'd be like, who is this asshole? Fuck her. You know, someone would raise a stink long before Reed Bernie does, you know? I guess that's what I'm saying. And so the sort of ramping up and the slowness of it, I was just, not slowness, that's not the right word because like Evan said, it is briskly paced. Um, I just, I was just kind of like waiting for the, the I don't know, the, the weirdness to come like full circle, you know? Um, And so when it did, I wasn't really, and I don't want to say that like I guessed where this movie was going because I it, it did surprise me in quite a few places. Like I didn't see coming that Nicholas Holt knew the plan the whole time and decided to like pay his $2,500 for two heads and get killed anyway just so he could eat <laughs> at this fucking restaurant. I mean, yeah. if you had told me that uh, like... I mean, that's insane. And so I just, I didn't even think that that was like a thing. But um, I, there were just, I don't know. I think there were more moments that really worked for me than moments that didn't work for me. And I'll tell you what I think, no joke, is going to go down as one of the scariest images I've seen in a movie this year. And we'll see how it plays out for the rest of the decade. When the chocolate is melting oh. down Janet McTeer's face. Yes. I Thank was you. horrified. Thank yeah. you. Horrified. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. a truly disturbing end when they all became human s'mores. It very much reminded me of the end of Midsummer when everything is set ablaze and you're just watching the people's, you know, <laughs> you're watching the, the uh, what's his name? Jack Rayner. Is that the actor's name? Where I he's think so. sewn up in the bear suit, yeah. being like paralyzed, just having to sit there and burn to death. Yeah. Oof. It reminded me of Midsummer. It reminded me of St. Maud. Like, you know, burning endings. Yeah, no, that, I'm so glad you said that, Dave, because that was the most disturbing image to me, yeah. too. And, like, if you just described it to somebody, it'd be like, melting chocolate on a head, okay. It's, it's the like, way it's melting yes. over her eyebrow, down yep. in her cheek, the look, look on, on her, her face. face. The oh. fact that the hat, the, the chocolate hat used to be like a box hat, and now right. it's kind of misshapen. It's all just, I mean, talk about the magic of... I don't know if that's, I mean, that's got to be a, just makeup, I guess. I don't know. It, kudos to whoever that person is, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this and, is, yeah. yes. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, and I, I did love Ray Fine's performance. Um, so good. D- just because it's, even though he's played lots of, like, characters who are duplicitous, who have, like, an, uh, you know, an evil edge or whatever, this is... It's it's malevolence born out of despair and heartbreak, yes. which is a lot different from just, you know, being, you know, the guy in Schindler's List. So, um, 
that's the one movie I pick out of my hat, of course, is fucking Schindler's List. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but we know what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, all, it's a surprisingly understated performance. And I, I always forget until I see him again just how much he can do with just the tiniest movements on his face. Agreed. He's a really great face Face actor. <laughs> no, I know that sounds yeah. like silly, but no, I think that's yeah. really important. And yeah. just with these, you know, the minutia of changes and expressions, and I completely agree with you. I think this would be a really fantastic double feature with Pig, um, the Nicolas Cage movie, because another film about a chef and talking about food and the artistry of cooking. I have to see Pig now, You I do guess. have to see Pig. It's amazing. It's a beautiful film. But yeah, and the the cinematography is stunning in this, you know, thinking about that melting chocolate scene. And I think it's funny yeah. because the cinematographer of this, also, we talked about My Cousin Vinny last Peter week. Peter Deming. Yep, he did My Cousin Vinny, yep. uh, Mulholland Drive, Evil Dead Lost too. Highway, Cabin in the Woods, like some great cinematography. Mm. So yeah, yeah. but I, I, yeah, I think this is really great. The other thing that I will say Um, because I know we're running really long on time. But um, I think one of the things that I read about Ray Fiennes was that he thought that restaurants were really chaotic, like with lots of people shouting. And good ones are not. They're very quiet. Everything is very ordered and, you know, meticulous. And that is very much true here too. And, you know, I think about this. My father's a chef and I think about this quite often that if somebody, if a chef is screaming at his other chefs, that's not a place you want to work. And he's not doing that. Ray Fiennes is very understated. Like you said, Dave, he's mm-hmm. very controlled and they all are willing to live and die for him. And that's a bit extreme, of course, you know, like other yes. chefs, that's not the case. But I think that, I think that authenticity, I picked up on that right away. And, and that made me really buy into this film and all of the performances and everything that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I will have nightmares about the way he's able to call attention with a single clap and <laughs> get everyone to yell in unison. Yes, chef. Yeah, yeah that uh, was quite something. Yes. But we should definitely move on to our last movie of the episode. We should talk about Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Which knives is Knives Out. <laughs> and then also <laughs> looking through a glass onion. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so get your like I, I've you know I got an earworm in somebody's head last week so now I'm doing it for two other songs. <laughs> <laughs> so this is written and directed by Ryan Johnson, just like the last Knives Out movie. This is a pretty stacked cast. Daniel Craig returning as his character Benoit Blanc, the <laughs> famous uh, detective. We've got Edward Norton, Kate Hudson, Dave Bautista, Janelle Monae, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, am I forgetting anybody? No, I think uh, like of the main cast of the main cast. Yeah, and then we've got some little like appearances from like Ethan Hawke and yeah. Hugh Grant. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Angela Lansbury. Yes, right. that's right. He's on a he in the beginning. He's on a Zoom with Stephen Sondheim, Natasha Lyonne, Angela <laughs> Lansbury, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and they're playing. You know, uh, some type of they're, online they're game playing together. Clue, right? Aren't they? Or so, it's like Clue. Some type of space game. I forget what it's yeah. called. Oh, right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. He, he just talks about how much he hates Clue later. I yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So so this is another adventure with Benoit Blank. He is invited to this exclusive weekend uh, by this eccentric, rich asshole, <laughs> Edward Norton, uh, he, he, on his private island somewhere off the coast of Greece. And so he goes to this ultra exclusive weekend for all these like they describe themselves as disruptors of industry (laughs) they're all supposed to be there for some murder mystery weekend and the murder mystery plans are quickly thrown out the window when daniel craig's character deduces the mystery that (laughs) edward norton was trying to was trying to foist upon them one that he claimed he wrote he hired jillian flynn to write which was quite funny that was funny (laughs) And then, yeah, this turns into an actual uh, murder mystery situation when Dave Batista drops dead, and um, and we find out some backstory on Janelle Monae's character and uh, who was supposed to be a former, you know, business partner of Edward Norton, and he had um, basically pushed her out of the company and and took all their fortune for himself. Any other high points we should cover before we dig into the movie? Mm, I mean, you hit the. 
the broad strokes. Sweet. Okay. So we also we all saw this earlier today. Uh, what do we all think of this movie? I liked it. Over, yeah, oh, I'm overall, <laughs> I'm on board. I just want more of these to crank out, like Enola Holmes, like Kenneth Branagh's Agatha Christie movies. I just want more, and I'm just here for it. Yeah, these kind of chamber mystery yes. things are kind of fun. Agreed. Yeah, I'll agree with you both there. The first Knives Out, I've had quite a lot of fun. This one I had, I would say, about as much fun. Uh, it's it's a good time. It's a fun little, you know, mystery. It's amusing cast. Uh, it's some great acting, um, some really great cinematography and editing. I think for me, that was like some mm-hmm. of my favorite parts of this movie. Uh, just some really interesting shot choices and characters sharing the same frame but being in completely you know different positions and just being very compellingly shot and edited and i enjoyed the score of this as well yeah and for a movie that's almost 2 hours and 20 minutes long it really moves it does which is, which is you know it's kind of a miracle in a good way i always use the word miracle to describe movies that are really really bad <laughs> but <laughs> but this is a miracle in a good way it's just like yeah. I, I remember when I looked at the running time, I'm like, 139 minutes. Oh, my God. And then it just, it's a quick 139 minutes. So Yeah, it moves. Um, the one thing that I was, as I was watching it, that I wasn't loving in the moment, but I did end up liking overall, was when we kind of backtrack in the story and find out how Janelle Monet's character is actually her twin sister. And that she, mm. Janelle Monet's character w- was murdered by someone at this <laughs> party. Uh, and so she's disguised herself as her sister and her and uh, Dano Craig have hatched this plan to figure out who the murderer is and also to uh, get proof that Edward Orton screwed her, o- <laughs> screwed the sister over. And so they're on this like covert mission. And at first I was like, why are we backtracking so much? And why are we spending so much time on this backstory? I was starting to get a little frustrated. But then when it actually came back around, I was pretty satisfied <laughs> with yeah. how it came back into the into the fold. Well, I talked a lot about the first two movies early on. So why doesn't Megan start this one off? Oh. <laughs> it's like, I felt like I oh. talked a lot in the other two movies as well. Well, I, ta- I don't really yeah, I talk think, a lot. Though. I appreciate that though, Dave. I don't really think I have a lot to say here. I, I, then maybe I, I will start. I just really liked this. <laughs> well, I'm already talking, so shush. <laughs> I know. I, know. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, I, I like Daniel Craig. I love Catherine Hahn. Love, love, love. Um, mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. great here. Um, I think Kate Hudson was good. Um, Dave Batista, I always enjoy seeing. Janelle Monet, I always enjoy seeing them too. Um, yeah, so I think this is a really great cast. I love that we're on a Greek island and it's sunny and beachy. Um, Ed Norton is such a dick in this and he plays him perfectly, almost maybe a little too well because I was really annoyed every time he was on screen. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, but no, I just, I thought this was fun and I keep coming back to an interview that Catherine Hahn did recently with I think variety where she, she was asked about knives out and she talked about how she didn't know Daniel Craig was so funny and such a comedic performer. And she was really pleasantly surprised, but she starts off by saying that she has such a crush on Rachel Vice, his wife. So I was like, I was like, Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, there were some things about this that, um, as I was watching it, I was just like, these are really strange choices that we're making here, and I don't like it. Um, oh. Yeah, like, well, it starts off. Now, the bathtub scene with Benoit Blanc playing the space game, which I'm like, all right, he's out of his element. It's a space game, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then when he's playing, like, where he's just kind of acting like a dunderhead at the beginning, and he's just acting like he's so out of place in Southern... It's like, what the... F- this is not this character. No. And then... And then it is revealed in the flashback that he and Janelle Monet have set up this entire thing for him to look like a little bit as I think he says, I'll, I'll put on a little bit of the Southern. He says something like, I'll basically, I'll act like yeah. a hick, you know? Right. The Southern I, flim flam or something. Yeah. It's something yeah. to that effect. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. But what I do not like and will never forgive is oh. the hidden twin sister. But you know what? The rest of this, I fucking can't stand that. 
<laughs> and even though this is kind of used with like a wink and a nod, it still is really irritating. That being said, I think the rest of this movie works well enough that you can kind of forgive that. Although, um, let's, I'm just going to use the number 100 as a, you know, because it's easy to do math with. Um, if, if Knives Out is a 100, this is like an 83. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Knives Out felt bigger in scale, maybe because we were on the mainland and there were other, like they went to other parts of the town and then there was the, um, whatever, the, 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 the chemists that they blow up, who's doing all the lab tests on the stuff. You know, there was like, there was a sense that there was another world going on. Mm. And when it was here and was just kind of a chamber piece, I was just kind of like, this feels claustrophobic, but not in a good way. Um, but also the other thing, and this, this I did see coming, and this is an accident. This was an accident because I, I realized watching the movie that it was played this way on purpose. I saw Edward Norton hand Dave Batista the drink right before he dies. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, that's really... I just remember thinking, well, that's strange. And then he died, and then he had said on the shore, yeah, does pineapple. that have any pineapple yep. in it? I don't fuck with pineapple. And I'm like, all right, well, he's been poisoned. Yep. I was like, but that's a really strange... And I just remember thinking, that's a strange choice to make Edward Norton hand that to him. But then when they do the replay of events and it's made to look like he accidentally put down the thing, but then he did do it on purpose. Like, okay, it all makes sense now. I did... Mm -hmm. It was misdirection. I did see what I thought I saw. But um, it was... But that's the only reason I had any idea that Edward Norton was the bad guy. I, I frankly, I'm not going to tell you which one I thought it really was. <laughs> <laughs> until until it was but i but at the same time i was kind of like edward norton's character is such a dick he has to be the killer yeah. and then he was um that's why i thought he wasn't because it was too, it was like it's too obvious too obvious right it wasn't the person <laughs> yeah. as dwight Schrute would said it was it's, as he would say it wasn't the person you most medium suspect <laughs> yeah i love that <laughs> and i yeah. this is this is not one of my like i just want to say this listeners this is not one of my dave guesses the ending thing i i just knew that because i saw the drink pass that's the only reason right. that i was like oh it's him I do um, think the movie did a good job of like almost gaslighting me into thinking that I hadn't seen that, that it was actually what yeah, they were saying at first. that he accidentally picked up the glass. Cause then I was like, no, he did. I did see that. But I like, I almost was second guessing myself as I was watching it. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. And then when it was all explained that, like I said, Benoit Blanc was playing up the whole like Duh, kind of thing. Um, and I usually don't like it when you think a character's dead, but then they're really not the way that Janelle Monet gets shot. And then it turns out the blood is just <laughs> Jeremy Renner's hot sauce. <laughs> I love that it was yeah. Jeremy Renner's hot sauce. <laughs> Jerry um, Leto's kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. For some reason, it's like, okay, I just, you know. I 100 I I a hundred percent believe that Jared Leto would have kombucha. By the way, oh I, just, I do too. <laughs> right? Yeah, I kind of believe that, that Jeremy real. Renner would have hot sauce. I don't know Me why. Too. But <laughs> and the other thing that yeah. I was pleasantly surprised by was uh, I've never thought that Dave Bautista was much of a of an actor or performer. But every time I see him, he's one of those. You know, he actually gets better each time, and I'm like, he's turned into a, like an actor. You know, in a good way. <laughs> anyway, um. Yeah, I, I think that overall, though, I was pleasantly surprised. It's just like, it's just kind of, if you just kind of go with it, you know, and maybe don't think about it as much as I was doing when it first started, it's a lot of fun, you know? I, I think one of the things that I think worked better in the first one was there are just so many characters in that, and they're all so broad. And and, and this one, mm -hmm. you've got half as many characters, but they're just as broad, so they have more space to fill. So it's just, it, it all seems a little bit more theatrical than even the first one, which is very theatrical. So um, do you know what I mean when I say that? I don't know. Um, yes. <laughs> so so I think the, the the first one, and maybe it's just because I saw this one six hours ago, but I think the first one worked a little bit better for me overall. But this one's still a whole lot of fun. Like no actual, mm. except for the twin thing, <laughs> no real complaints. Yeah, you know, same. I kind of liked the twin thing, and I'll tell you why just quickly. Only because yeah. it's like a soap opera thing, and I love that. <laughs> yes, that's true. You're right. Yeah, 
if you look at it like that, then sure. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, what couldn't happen? <laughs> that is you know? also, very true. <laughs> I think it adds an element of tension to the story because, you know, at least one person on that island knows that that's not her. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Which, like, yeah, which, which other says, person, right? Yeah. 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 Which other person here <laughs> is it? Yeah. And it does seem like it could be any of them because I think one of the other things I really dug about this is that you have edward norton who's the ringleader of all this and they initially portray him as this you know genius when it turns out no he's a fucking idiot he's just great (laughs) at manipulating everybody and everyone there has as they you know say in the movie have been suckling at the golden teat and so they've (laughs) basically been complicit in any bad shit he's done you know screwing over janelle monet's character uh andy and lying in court about it to help him out and just going along with all of his schemes this entire time. And so I found that compelling that they were all just kind of like, oh man, you know what? I'm just going to roll with this because this is serving me. And then <laughs> then when Janelle Monet's twin sister, uh, I forget, I can't remember her name. She just Helen, blows right? up the entire Helen, yeah. compound at the end, uh, which is, I love, she just sets fire to the entire place and it explodes because it's, uh he's experimenting with some hydrogen fuel that's highly flammable and it just blows up the glass onion and blows up his car and all the paintings including the mona lisa which he has the actual mona lisa because the pandemic happened and the the french government needed money so he paid them for the actual mona lisa and there's this running joke about how he always wants to be mentioned in the same breath as the mona lisa so she's like good job you will now be mentioned in the same breath you destroyed the mona lisa through your arrogance and stupidity yeah yeah, I like that too. Um, I'm not sure that I necessarily buy Edward Norton as a dumb person because he's it's it's kind of hard to play dumb if you're really really smart. <laughs> I don't know. I think, but um, that, that being said, that being said, it is just sort of supposed to be. It's just I think it's just supposed to be a romp. And when you kind of get out mm-hmm. of your like, I have a problem getting into my head thinking about like where's this going and the story. And this is one of those movies you just need to like let it you need to let it take you on the, on the ride, you know? So, and when I started doing that, I started enjoying it a whole lot better. That's like when we got to the flashback, that's when I was like, Oh, okay. Got it. So just go with it. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Um, the one thing I will say though, and I think about this often and I don't know who said it. I don't know where I read it or even when super helpful here. Um, But I remember (laughs) hearing or reading about when you write a mystery, you want to make it so it's not so obvious that people can guess it immediately, but also it's not so obtuse that when you get to the end, people are like, what? Huh? That doesn't make sense. Like you want to have it. So if you, you know, if you rewatch it or if you think back to scenes, you can be like, oh yeah, that and that and that, that all does all come together. And I think that that this film does that very well. Like all the pieces are there. And I know yeah. Daniel Craig's character keeps, you know, uh, Benoit keeps saying it. Like, it's so obvious. It's all right here. It's all, you know, clear as day. But mm-hmm. it, but it is. It's all right there. We all, you know, and I, I just, I think this does that well. From a mystery story writing, storytelling Yeah, it, it does. I agree with you. It does well when it goes back and shows you the same scenes from the different angles where they're all kind of sneaking around. And there's that one scene where Dave Batista is seeing his girlfriend hook up with uh, <laughs> Edward Norton. Right. And then we saw before Benoit peek out from behind a tree. It was watching. And then and then, and then we see Janelle Monet peek out from the yep. tree behind <laughs> Daniel Craig. So there's just a lot of moments like that that work. And it does feel like it comes together cohesively. So I, I, I agree with that. And I love his character's, uh, I don't know, his sense of humor. <laughs> she's just always saying things like, oh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> and, uh, I love that he's that, I just laughed. <laughs> yeah, I laughed at all of his, like, you know, little expressions of, like, exasperation. But my favorite was, like, none of the other ones had any kind of swears. And then he put the hot sauce in his eyeballs to make himself <laughs> cry. And then the one time he does that, he's like, oh, fucking shit. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh. I, I also speaking of that too i also love his venom for clue because like i love clue clue's amazing he's like stupid game yeah. it's a terrible game <laughs> i always yeah. do bad at it <laughs> you're going from room to room why <laughs> yeah yeah 
Oh, that is funny. And then they end up doing a bunch of stuff from Clue in the movie to try to figure out what's going on, to find the envelope, for example. <gasps> oh my God, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even really think about that, but no, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah. And I also it. just like, and it's a, it's a good question, uh, you know, Edward Norton, the, the, the whole plot hinges on this envelope that um, uh, Janelle Monet's character wrote out the, the plan for the company. Edward Norton stole, he rewrote it in his handwriting, et cetera. And then, but he's kept it all these years, or rather he's kept it after he's killed Andy, the, the, his ex-business partner. And then someone says, why did you keep that? Like, what the hell is wrong with you? And it's like, yeah. yeah, why did he keep that? What a jackass. <laughs> Which is part of the point, you know, he's mm-hmm. an idiot. So yeah, it's yeah. fun. It's yeah. It's a rollicking good time. I do it like is. that it's another class commentary that just because somebody is rich does not mean they're smart, does not mean they're talented. <laughs> We're watching that play out in real life right now. We so. sure are. It's true. <laughs> I'm not going to mention right. any names because I don't right. want to, you know. But yeah, I you guys we know all, what you're talking about. We all know I think, who. I think we all know we're talking about <laughs> someone whose name starts with uh, and ends in Elon Musk. Oh. <laughs> oh, Evan. Evan. Yeah. <sighs> well, okay, cat's out of the... Out of the burlap <laughs> sack now. Yep. Right. yep. It's out of the burlap sack and it's running Twitter with the other cats that are running around. Yeah. Oh, I wish cats were running around running Might Twitter. be going better. <laughs> I think it yep. would. <laughs> Hitting random keys on keyboards. Yep. <laughs> that would definitely be going better. Oh, cats. Hmm. Aye, aye, aye. Anyway. All right. Well, <laughs> anything else? About Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery. Any other stuff that either of you wanted to talk no, about? No, it's just fun. Give it a shot. Yeah. If I, you liked if you liked Knives Out, you will probably like this. I agree with that. Now I want to see Daniel Craig in more comedic roles, though. He is very funny. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's... Oh, <laughs> before we wrap up, I wanted to say my favorite throwaway gag from uh, this movie was when they're in the gym and uh, it's like workout with Serena Williams and she's on screen and it looks like, you know, it's just like a screensaver. And then Serena Williams is like, hey, is anybody actually going to do a session here? Like you're paying me for this time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I found that really amusing. Anyway, uh, so let's do a recap. We've got uh, the people we hate at the wedding which I think is pretty safe to say none of us would recommend, but uh, let's just go around the horn. (laughs) Mm, If you don't like yourself, then maybe see that. But otherwise, I would say skip it. (laughs) Wow. Even if you don't like yourself, don't see it. No. (laughs) Actually, that's that's fair too. I would say skip it, watch Schitt's Creek, watch The Good Place instead. Right. Yeah. Watch any of those shows with those actors doing way yes. better work. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a, it's going to open in theaters, but will be on Amazon Prime um, yeah. in a couple weeks. And then the menu, which I believe will be opening in theaters. See it or don't see it? See it. Oh, yeah. See it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. I would also highly recommend the menu. So definitely check that one out if you have the opportunity. And Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, which will be in theaters uh, and it will be coming to Netflix in late December. But only in theaters for one yeah. week. Just one week. Right. If oh. you don't see it now, you got to wait until like December. So. Mm-hmm. so see it. Yep. If you want to. I would also say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel safe. <laughs> I, yes, exactly. All those things. So, yes, I would say see it. it sounds like Dave, you would say see it as well. Yep. All right, so so two two yays and and one nay. That's that's not too bad for a week. No. It's a good week. Yeah, I would say so. Well, that does it for another episode of Spoiler Piece Theater. We want to say a huge thank you to our editor Otto Clammer. Otto, thank you for making us sound great week after week. Thank you, Otto. Thank you, Otto. <laughs> you can find us anywhere you get podcasts, but you can also find us at our website, which is just spoilerpiece dot com. We're all over social media. We're Spoiler Piece Theater on Facebook, at Spoiler Piece on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you want to argue with us about people we hate at the wedding, or you want to <laughs> dig into the menu or uh, Glass Onion, you can email us, spoilerpiece at gmail.com, or you can give us a call. At 86221-PEACE. You can uh, leave us a voicemail. You can shoot us a text. We'd love to hear from you if you just want to say hi or if you want to 
talk more about one of these films. We're happy to get into it with you. And uh, if you like the show, please rate and review us. You can go to ratethispodcast.com slash spoiler piece. That will take you to your platform of choice. It helps more people find the show. Helps give us cred in the podcast community. And uh, we'd really appreciate it. And if you really, really like the show, please consider joining our Patreon. As I mentioned at the top of the show, this week in our bonus audio, we talked about the 1998 film Practical Magic. Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman and that was a really fun conversation so if you sign up for a Patreon you can uh, get bonus audio each week you can vote in polls and uh, it's a really good time Woo. <laughs> my name is Evan Crean I'm co-chair of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and co-author of your 80s movie guide to better living you can follow me on Twitter Instagram and Letterboxd as Real Recon and that's real as in film real my name is Megan Kearns I write film reviews for Edge Media Network I'm a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and a member of Galaga. You can follow me on Twitter and TikTok at Opinion S World and on Instagram and Letterboxd at The Opinion S. And my name's Dave Riedel. I write and I talk about movies. You can follow, no, before that, I'm a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association. (laughs) And you can follow me on Twitter for now, Instagram and Letterboxd. I'm Dave Sees Movies. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.